All right, we're back. Fit screen, there's the hatter, the hatter. And we started in context and we have isolated him. I'm happy with that. You know how happy I am? Gray contrast, cut out. I'm gonna save that layer too. I am paranoid. All right. So let me explain real fast what's going to happen. I need to make these lines pure black, absolute black. If I were to come over with a paintbrush, there is some uh, smoothness to these lines. I don't need the paintbrush. I need the pencil tool. And the pencil tool creates lines that are absolutely on a pixel level, pure black. And that's what I need. Oh, look at that. There's stuff there. Don't worry, I'll get rid of that stuff. But the problem we're running into is that some of these lines, not these lines, these lines are good. Some of these lines need to be darker than they currently are. And to do that, I could come over here to the burn tool. And I could say that I want to burn the shadows. And what that does, when I burn the shadow, it's going to take anything that is in the gray range and make it darker. Once it's in the black range, it's kind of protected. So again, I can come over here and do that. Now, I got to be careful because a little bit of that hole I want to be, that hole I want to be there. Some of that line I want to be there. So there's a balance here on what I'm trying to protect, that line but not all of it. Now you can't, I, I can do this only so carefully. And by that I mean, I can come over here and I can do this, but I'm still gonna lose some of my detail. Now I'm not worried about losing all of my detail, but I wanna make sure that some of these lines are protected against when I come back and do some other things. Now, again, some of these lines I'm not too worried about. Some of them are going to stay protected anyway. So I'm going to come over here and do that. Now, you'll notice that those little white dots went away. But those little white dots weren't really what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the big white dots. I'm worried about some of these lines, but I'm not worried about all these lines. Some of these lines I want to be there, and some of them I don't. So I'm carefully going over not every, not every piece, just the part where I'm worried about the lines disappearing and that uh, that was too much because that line I don't want to disappear that line in there I'm worried about so I mentioned earlier that the big ones were the lines in the face and of course the in this style why that's important is of course it's very noticeable notice by the way that like that little bit of, of, of uh, white in the six probably shouldn't be there probably is just a misprint some of the stuff, see that was a little bit of like a little bit of white there? Probably just a misprint. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm basically just darkening up some. There's the hand tool. Some of these very lighter lines. And again, here's a great example. If I come over here, I can make those black, the, the, the dark gray that's got little white things in it, but I want to keep those white dots because some of those white dots are important to me. I don't want to have to, I, I don't want to have to redraw all those little white specks, but also a lot of those white specks are literally just part of the page. So there's a balance here. Those I want to be black, like those dots aren't really there, but those dots are. So I'm look. I'm basically going to go over anything that I think is going to disappear if I start to edit. And that specifically is my very thin lines. Not a lot of very thin lines in this image. Probably why I picked it. Lots of non-thick lines. Um, lots of non-thick lines. Lots of thick lines may help me. Now that i got to be careful about because I want, I want some of the, 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 that in there. So right now I'm not looking, I'm looking to dark, darken up some of the stuff, but I'm mostly looking to protect thin lines. That's a thin line. Those are thin lines, but 
those thin lines, I'm probably going to be separated at some point. I'll have to go back and do that later. And like that, there's no dot. Those dots should be connected, but they're not. And by should, I mean I say they should. I'll never know whether they were supposed to be or not. Now, this one's very tricky because I want some of the white, but not all of the white. So I'm going to do a quick run over this to see if I can get some of that little spots out of there. That's about it. So now, I just darkened up quite a bit of this. How much did I darken up? Well, let's take a look. Before and after. Before and after. I darkened up some lines, but did I ruin anything? I don't think I ruined anything yet. Yeah, all right. Now that I've darkened up some lines, I can go to town on lightening up some lines. And while the burn tool made my shadows darker, the dodge tool is going to make my highlights brighter. Now, the highlights are the easiest things to get rid of here because if you look over here, you've got all that little like specks of stuff. Well, if I come over here and start to paint with this thing, everything that's got specks is going to turn into just pure white. You're like, wait a second. Too much, too much. Yeah, that's way too much. My exposure was set to 58%. It's too hard. Let's go with 30%. Gets rid of all the, the dots. But it does. Oh. Ooh, I have enable airbrush turned on. Let me turn that off again. The enable airbrush means that if I linger, it just keeps getting brighter, and I don't want to do that. All right. And you can see now look in there. There we go. What you'll also notice is, is things to be seem to be getting crisper. And they're getting crisper because I'm getting rid of the grays. So it's getting it really into its fundamental black and white. Not quite black and white, but it's getting close. Most importantly, it's leaving enough for me to see what it is I need to work on later on when I go through and by hand redraw some of these lines. I just want to make sure I leave myself some breadcrumbs. Oh, too far. Again, what I mentioned was delicate was up here. And yep, you see how, how, how delicate those lines are? Ooh. That's way too much. I'm going to undo all that. So I'm going to come over here. I'll go through the good stuff. The good stuff is the easy stuff. Right, there's no question about what's going on over here. Though, interesting enough, I can get in there. Now let me move over this way. That's why I'm saving the bad stuff for later. Because why not? Go for the easy stuff first. All right, the hand looks good. Look at that. Get that. Get those holes back open. See, I'm not really too worried in here because, again, I'm worried in there. Open that up. Oop, too far, too far. Now that's a tricky one. I'll have to reconstruct that. But as you can see in here, those white dots, I'm trying to make them to come back inside the black. And there's some of it that's still missing, which I'll get to in a little bit. This is where it gets dangerous because I'm having to use what are basically painterly tools. I'm having to draw with exposure. And I have to decide where to draw, how much to draw. So there is a judgment call here. It looks like I'm doing everything, but trust me, I'm not. And it's those few spots where I'm going over it gently, or it's those few spots where I'm not doing it that make all the difference when I go on later on. Look at that. Look at that. Get that to open up. That's nice. All 
I'm worried about these feet. And the reason I'm worried about these feet is because there's just not a lot of stuff going on in here. But I'll show you a trick to the feet in a second. So I want to open up those lines again. But I can only go so far. All right. And I'm also looking for the very, very, very light specks of uh, gray that are just in places, or because I want to get the more I get rid of them, the easier my life gets. Avoid the face. Let's do that. Let's do the hat. See, there's that. There's that bit of mess that shouldn't have been there. All right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to redraw some of this. Ooh. Don't worry, I've got a trick for that as well. But at some point, it becomes a matter of drawing. Remember, this image was originally two inches tall. And I'm making it big, which of course is cool. But will it hold up? All right, so before I do any more damage, let's zoom out and see what I'm up to. I'm going to put the other one back on before and after. And you're like, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. Think about it. Did I lose any lines? No, I just made some of them thinner. They're going to get inked up. The ink will spread. This is better. So instead of this softness, I'm looking at this really harsh line. Now, let's look at our levels. That's what we have. That's what we had. You see how I got rid of a lot of that light stuff in there. Now, if you're going, well, wait a second. If you're just going to make this black and white, why not just go over to Image Adjustments uh, Threshold and uh, pick a line? And that's what this does. Is I can come over here, and that's pure black. It's pure white. I can, I could do this, but my goal is to keep squishing some to the white, some to the black, some to the white, some to the black, until the, the, there's nothing in between. And that's my goal here. And the only way to do that is by hand, well, at least for now. So I took the darkest regions and I moved them to black, and I took the lightest regions and I shoved them to white. But I've got some areas here that I want to not damage. Uh, so what I could do what I could do is I could grab that, that the dodge tool and say Maybe I'm going to only try to bring up the mid-tones. And what that does is it's going to come and grab those little medium gray dots and bring them up a little bit. Not that it's perfect here. I have a feeling no matter what I do, I'm going to have to redraw the, a lot of this face. But it's actually not that big a face, so I'm actually not overly concerned. All right. Let's go back to the mid-tones. Bring them up a lot. So the midtones, what I'm doing there is, is any of those lines that are so close together, any of those lines that are so close together where I see those little gray dots, this will push those up. Especially where there's lines, those really thin, those really thin lines.
And it's at this point you start realizing how much of this is going to be an interpretation. And you're like, well, can you make it perfect? It's two inches. Anything that I do that involves enlarging an image from two inches to ten inches is technically an interpretation. But I'm going to make it a good interpretation. So I'm bringing up the dots. That'll come to haunt me later. Is can we get these lines to come up? There we go. These very thin lines that are in the foot. See that? It's very thin lines in the foot. They're there. They have to be. Remember, it's black or it's white. And once I do that, I can go back to my burn tool and get rid of the stuff in there that doesn't belong. So now I end up getting that. Again, reinforcing some of those lines. And the other question we have to ask ourselves is, do you like the way it looks? See, not from a point by point, pixel by pixel thing, is this a good image? Obviously there's a couple of spirit pixels there. And again, going back to, we had, we have, it's, it's pretty close. I mean, we're not, we haven't killed too much yet. We'll, we'll see what we've killed in a little bit. It's just the evolution of this to that. You're like, well, we lost all that gray. Exactly. Wasn't supposed to be any gray. All right. Next step. The next step I'm going to do is, is more of an experimental. I'm probably going to undo it after I do it. But I want to take a look at how distributed some of these light regions are. Image adjustments equalize. And what that's going to do is going to kind of show me the hot spots of my problems. Most of it's in areas I don't care about little gray spots in there but interesting to interesting to know all right so this is my gray cut uh, that's my gray cutout and this is my uh, dodge burn and i'm going to duplicate this layer again move on to the next step this next step's a weird one it's a very very strange one I'll make it a blank layer cut all black now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the magic wand tool. Now, when I use the magic wand tool, I'm going to turn off the anti-aliasing. I'm going to say, just grab me pixels. Not even contiguous pixels. Grab me every white pixel there is. Oops, I'm on the wrong page. Grab me every white pixel there is. And it grabbed every white pixel there is within a tolerance of 30. Which could be good or it could be bad. Now, if I grabbed every pixel with a tolerance of 30, that's white, that means everything left would be black, or black and the gray that I'm not trying to do. Oh, wait a second, this won't work. Hold on a second. I've got too much transparency. First thing at first, I gotta take everything that's transparent on this layer and make it white. 
There we go. Go ahead. Everything, if it's transparent, make it white. All right, so now I've got this, this perfectly white image. Yeah, sorry, that wasn't going to work. Good. Good. Now I'm going to come back over here and say grab all the white pixels. So now it's grabbed every pixel that is white or near white. Select inverse. Now that's everything other than those pixels. That's what I have selected. Everything except those pixels. I'm going to come over to this layer here. I'm going to set my, my, my fill color to be black. Anti-alias is turned off. And I'm going to, oh, I'm sorry. Anti-alias is turned off. And I'm just going to pick a spot where I know there's going to be ink. And it's going to fill in the entire picture. And that is a filled in picture. Now, you're like, it's not right. I know it's not right. But what it is, is a starting point. And no matter how you slice it, it is 100% black and white. So, I went as far as I could with the other tools. I went as far as I could with the global brushing tools. Now, I needed to get where I'm going. Now, I, I could have done this again. And let me, let, me just, let me do it again. So this is all black. I'm going to call this all black at 30. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call it all black at mm, 100. What do we mean by 100? That means I'll, I'm going to go back to this image here, and I'm going to select the white... But instead of a tolerance of 30, I'm going to select it as a tolerance of 100. Select inverse. Come over here. Do the same thing I did before. And that's this image. So I have this image or this image. It's hard to compare them because they're on a white background. You know what I could use? Give me a white background. Give me another one. So I have this image here, or this image here, or this image here. So I, the difference is hard to see from here, but when I zoom in, it becomes more apparent. One is a subset of the other. Thinner lines versus thicker lines. So this is one version. This is the other version. I think the 30 may be too much. The 30 might be too much. And the 100 might be too little. Uh, 100 might work. How do I really know what I'm looking at? Well, there's another way of looking at this. Let's come over here to my original. Um, let's come over here to... No, let's come over here to my original. This is our, our base level. We either have too many lines or too few lines. Let's think about if we have too few lines. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to call this my um, red compare layer. And what I'm going to do with this layer is I'm going to make it a red scale. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to colorize it. I'm going to make it red. Bring the saturation all the way up. And then I'm going to bring up the lightness until the black goes away. So now this gives me an idea of the red layer. 
So this is my, my original image as a red scale. Beautiful. This is what happens if I put the black on top of it. Anywhere where there is solid red, not the faded red, the faded red is the grays, but anywhere there's solid red, I missed a line. And I'll have to draw it back in. The other way around, I'll get to it a little bit. That's a whole different story. So you can see, I'm going to have to fill in some of the blanks. But how many blanks am I going to have to fill? You know what? That might do it. I think the hundred might do it. All right. So, not one to keep things I don't need. <laughs> I'm going to delete those two layers. And now we have this all black at a hundred. The at a hundred is just so we know what we had. Now I'm going to turn off the the, the red compare la layer for a second. Next thing we need to do, let's take a deep breath, is look for stray pixels. And stray pixels do exist, and they're hard to find. Easy way to get rid of stray pixels is you go over to Stroke, and you add what's called an outside stroke, and you add an outside stroke at, let's say, like, you know, 8 pixels. And what that does is, is it shows me anything where there's data that I don't need to, need to be there. Now, yeah, now you can see, and look at that, there's a couple of specs here or there that I don't want. Grab my eraser tool, set it to pencil mode. Pencil mode is the is is like a pen mode, but for, pencil mode is like pencil mode, but for the uh, for the paintbrushes pencil, this is the same thing. Those two dots may or may not supposed to be there. Aha, aha! Now we can see some of those other weird lines. Now the good stuff I'll get rid of when I start when I start using the, um, the tablet, which will be shortly. I'll be breaking before the tablet. But then you can hear and go, ah, that shouldn't be there. That should be there. That shouldn't be there. That should be there. That shouldn't be there. I'm not trying to edit the image yet. I'm looking for strays. That's a good one there. I'm, I'm confused about this one right here. I don't know if those lines are supposed to be there in the sandwich or not. They just don't feel right to me. I don't know. Do they feel right to you? They don't feel right to me. They just, just don't feel right to me. And I'm going to make an executive decision. That feels much better. So, I'm looking for the pixels that are, that are loose. Usually the ones on the outside. They say on the outside because... That's the ones I'm worried about right now, compositionally. A couple of the floating ones on the inside, too. Notice I'm only looking for the ones that are that are black. The, the places where I need to fill in the blanks, I'll deal with those later. This is mostly about how did I screw up when I cut things out earlier. Let's look at the cup. Yeah, that, 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 that dot, I don't know, that dot doesn't work for me. It, if it looks like a mistake, it'll be perceived as a mistake. I am making a decision. And that's how this game is played. Hmm, those two dots are suspicious. Let's look at it without those two dots. Yeah, those two dots kind of look really light to me. They don't look like they're part of the image. See how this works? Also, you notice how the, 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 the white went away? It's because this is literally just black lines. And again. I'm 
I'm going to take my red comparison layer and I'm going to fill it with white. This makes my life a little bit easier as I look at this thing. Good. So we can start seeing how we did. Next. So the first thing is, could I just go with this? Could I just stop right here, right now, say, I'm done. I'm going to print this image. The answer is, I could, but it will have flaws that aren't organic. And by organic, I mean they'll, they'll look like technical mistakes. They'll look like they're automated mistakes. They'll look like the kind of mistakes that are going to happen anyway when I print. When I print, nothing's going to be perfect. So what I want is a perfect image so that when I get imperfections, it's like I was at 100 and I got down to 90. But if I started at 80, it'll get to 70. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to fall apart. Too many, too many mistakes along the way. But I'm going to save what I'm doing. And I'm going to pause it now. Because when I come back, I literally am going to fill in the blank. Ooh, but before I do that, I want to show you something cool. Let me duplicate my red comparison layer. Let me put it up top for a moment. All right. So now I have the strangest sandwich you've ever seen. I've got the, uh, the red comparison layer on top and the red comparison layer on bottom. Now the red comparison layer that's on bottom, when I scan around, if I find anything that's red, I know that's a missing line. So I look for anything that's dark red, and I know that probably should be continuous. But how do I know where there's stuff that's missing that I, I want, that, that I've drawn black, but it shouldn't have been there? Well, what I can do there is I can take this, and I can do a difference. Not a difference. Is it a difference? It is a difference. And if I do a difference... What you're going to notice, only with this layer turned on, and with this layer turned off, I turn this layer off, it gets weird again. But if I have these two layers sandwiched down in between each other, this is the coolest thing. So if there's red, and then there's black, and then there's red, wherever it's sandwiched, wherever it's sandwiched and you see white, that means that there's black that shouldn't be there. See that? Right there. That little bit tells me that I should open that up. So I literally could go through this entire image, and again, I can decide which of these I'm keeping and which of these I'm not. So I can go through the entire image twice. With the sandwich turned on, I can delete, I can erase, and when I erase the white... I'm erasing the black, so weird. And then I can turn the sandwich off, and then I, wherever there's red, I need to add black. So I'm really going to be using two tools. The eraser tool to get rid of the white, which is going to be where I've overdrawn, like my bank account. And the, <laughs> the, and the pencil tool where there's red, where I need to add back to it. And I'll actually first start off by going one and then the other. And this is a technique that serves me well. And you're like, well, can't you just automate it? Mm. If this was a horrible image, and I opened it up and there were huge swaths of white, yes, I could actually flatten those layers to get make copies, flatten them together, select the white, and then delete it from the other layer. But here, it's just a subtlety. It's a guide. It's a way of looking through the image at the same time. And with that, I'm going to take my break. And as always, please be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ooh, and share. Like, subscribe, follow, and share. Ooh, and comment. Like, subscribe, share, follow, and comment. Yeah, that's right. Do it all. Thank you.